Welcome to a special presentation sponsored by Quorum Group. Hello everyone, I'm Gina Stanhope and welcome to our Sellers Panel. We're happy to have on several luminaries to start the year off with their insights. We're joined today by Joachim Walsher, CEO of Plan Focus Software, Steve Richmond, founder of Projetech, Simon Nugent, CEO of Alemba, and Kevin Nolan, co-founder of Asperol. Thank you everyone for joining us today and let's get straight into it. But the first question, why did you go through the M&A process? Was there a motivation? Let's start with you, Joachim. Yeah, I mean, there was for sure motivation. We have been approached several times uh, along the years. Uh, the first time I think was about in 2012. Back then we were still a pretty small company um, in, a, in a partnership. Um, and then again in 2018, and that really triggered us. It, it started us thinking about, hey, um, if we're being approached, um, it would make sense that we know a bit more about the process and we can actually use that knowledge and prepare. And so that was really the key motivation for us. Thanks, Joaquim. How about you, Steve? 42 years after I started Project Tech, it became apparent that I needed an exit strategy of some sort. Eventually, mortality uh, kind of stares you in the face. You realize you're not going to live forever. And you have to start making some decisions about what it is that you want to happen or what it is that you're going to do. Uh, the sale of small business is complicated. Uh, mine wasn't overly or underly more complicated than others. However, we were in a specific niche and it was pretty apparent to me that we were going to need some advice. Selling out to employees wasn't uh, much of an option given the numbers involved. And advice on how to sell a business was, you know, it's something you only do once, maybe some people do it more than once, but for most of us, it's a, it's a singular event. So expertise is pretty important. And to ensure business continuity and to take care of the people that I've worked with for so many, many years, I started to research companies that might be able to help me in my quest. Forum Group was a great fit. They understood the technology world. Uh, very well. And I found them to be um, good counsel. I got a lot of great advice. They've got a proven process. You, you just work the process and it, it, um, it's something that I'm, uh, I'm very happy with. Thank you, Steve. Simon, what about you? I think we'd set the company up in 2007 um, and certainly internally in the company, we could see that there was cycles um, and we had done a big, like essentially a renovation cycle of the business. Um, and we could really tell that either we could run it for another cycle, that would be another three or four years, or it was a good time to actually do an M&A process to, you know, to show people what we've done and, and try and get them interested at that point. So I guess it was a, a timing um, a timing issue for us. Um, good good opportunity, you know, to, to you know, for us maybe to, to realize some of the hard work that we'd put in. Thanks, Simon. And finally, Kevin? Really, uh, we as a company had focused in on our technology and that's where most of our resources were. We had felt we had developed a technology that could be used by large multinationals, but at the same time, we were a small company and we knew for that technology to be made available to large companies, it probably had to come to a, through a larger entity we would probably, where we would not get the door opened. And that was the reason we entered that process. We felt the timing was right to, to be part of a larger entity who could open those doors for us. Uh, well, a key, a key motivator would be that we felt we, we had plateaued at the level of the kind of customers we were getting to. There was a clear target customer base above that level, but traditionally those, those customers hadn't dealt with, client, with companies our size. They were tending to deal with larger technology companies, so very much the same as before. That was a key motivation. We said if we wanted to make the next step up, it had to be, we felt, part of a larger organization. That's who we were going to be competing against for those projects. Great. Now moving on to the next question. What surprised you most about the M&A process? Any mistakes made along the way? We'll start with Steve this time. I believe what was most surprising to me about the M&A process was just how often it happens. 
how many of these transactions are going on at, at any one time. I also believe that the complexity of the negotiation was something that I had really experienced before. So I was a little surprised with that. If there's something I'd change, I don't think so. The timing was probably very appropriate. We were at a point where the company's growth had gotten to, um, you know, critical mass for the deal that we were trying to do or the deal type that we were trying to do. I feel like um, everything went according to plan. I was um, pretty happy with it. There's a lot of front end work that goes into M&A. There's messaging, there's information gathering. When uh, interested parties come to the table, they want to see a lot of information and they, they like to see it right away. So putting all that together and having the information available in the right format for people to be able to peruse when the time came was really a great deal more work than I had planned. You, you uh, get to the point in your career where you're managing your business in a certain way and that information comes to you in that format on a regular basis and you're comfortable with it. And that not, that is not necessarily the format that potential buyers might want to see that information in. So making sure that you have the numbers in the correct format that are presentable, of course, they're accurate, uh, was very much part of the uh, get ready process for me. The next step along the way was really identifying the market. Who, in fact, were we trying to sell to? The interesting thing for me was that I had been in a very singular business, a very niche um, software reseller SaaS business for, for 30 years. And I felt pretty comfortable in that marketplace. And what I had to do was uh, pivot completely. I had something completely different to sell in a completely different marketplace under completely different circumstances. So a lot of education and I was uh, very fortunate to get a lot of good counsel. Thanks, Steve. What about you, Simon? I'm sure we made tons of mistakes. Um, surprise, I mean, it was the first time I'd been through such a process. Um, it was, you know, all the due diligence was probably about what I expected, but very detailed. Um, was there anything that surprised me? I mean, not really. There was a lot of spreadsheet work. Um, in our process, we had a private equity uh, firm who were interested at the start um, and, and they were just totally obsessed with spreadsheets. So there was an awful lot of work in that. Um, that's probably the main thing. But broadly, yeah, no, I, I think it was pretty much as we expected. Um, there wasn't anything that really took us by surprise. Thanks, Simon. Now, Kevin? I don't think, and I was having this discussion earlier with, with uh, one of the guys, I don't think there were any mistakes. The thing that surprised us most about the process was, but particularly through Quorum, we would have had, have had an idea who we thought potential buyers would be. But through the Quorum process, a whole new range of possible buyers came came out that we wouldn't have expected, would have had an interest in our technology. To, to be honest, we didn't know that those sectors existed or weren't familiar with them. So suddenly it was a, it was pleasant to see, a surprise to see there were new kind of sectors or areas that uh, had an interest in the technology we had. We were very much focused on the retail technology providers, but there was a broader circuit than we, than we had thought existed. So that was the biggest surprise to me, and it was one of the biggest benefits of having dealt through Quorum was access to that database. Thank you, Kevin. Joachim, what about you? What surprised us most about the M&A process? Um, there, there were, I think, two things in hindsight that really surprised us. One is, in general, how buyers are evaluating companies um, and that, that what really it means to be a strategic fit or a financial fit. Um, especially about the strategic buyers, we had one thing that surprised us. We had uh, an interesting uh, potential buyer who was keenly sort of uh, had good fit of our software. The, the issue there was that there were orders of magnitude bigger than us. They were like a hundred billion dollar company. And at that, we just wouldn't have moved their needle. So it would have kept the M&A team busy for quite some time, but it wouldn't really have changed their results on this, uh, in this kind of dimension. Um, so that was one of the surprises that we saw. Uh, the, the second surprise that we really saw was that 
um, it does affect the team inside the company. And so uh, we had a little bit of a situation where, where employees were concerned about what we're doing. We were asking a lot of questions about data, about numbers, and, and that sooner or later the surfaces. And so that surprised me that it, this would sort of um, unsettle the team a little bit. Um, we got over it, we managed it, but it was a bit more tense than we had expected. For our third question, what advice do you have for tech CEOs considering M&A? Let's go to Simon first. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, obviously, I think a lot of tech CEOs are in it to make an exit at some point. Um, certainly don't be afraid of it. Um, you know, uh, I think it's a, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing to do from my point of view. It was very positive. Um, do, you, do your preparation work is what I'd say. Thanks, Simon. Now to you, Kevin. Well, one of the biggest learnings we had at the very beginning, and I know John Scott made this point to us, was uh, we had prepared our deck, our slide deck, initial presentation, and it was heavy on history, and it was heavy on detailed technology. We had to scrap that. And really, we had to get our story right succinctly down to why we were a good proposition for acquisition. And we did that very clearly. It took a number of takes on it, but I think that was one of the first things we got right. And once we got that right, then buyers were interested in delving deeper into the history and delving deeper into technology. But to hook them that first day, having your story right, that you can say in 15 minutes why this is what we are about and why where we're going in the future. That was the most important thing, I think, because I know personally I was the one putting that together, that story, as, the, as, the, as, the, as, the, as leading sales and marketing. So I know we, had, we would have, without that advice, definitely have gone more into history and more into technical, which I think was, would have been a mistake. Thank you, Kevin. Now, Steve? As far as advice given is for people considering doing what it is that I've gone through, I would encourage you to read prodigiously uh, anything you can get your hands on about selling a small business. Uh, podcasts are extremely valuable. You can get an MBA online anymore if, if you're patient enough to sit down and sift through the uh, the poor quality things to get to the good things. And, and even some of the poor quality stuff's got a nugget in it. I would read prodigiously, learn as much as I could about not just the market that your business is in, but the nature of M&A in general, a lot of terms and terminologies it helps to become familiar with early on, uh, keeps the contract conversations a lot more on point when that, uh, when that time comes. And uh, for me, my advice would be to prepare yourself in knowing what it is you're about to undergo and learning as much about it as you can. Thanks, Steve. Now, Joaquim? Well, there's a bunch of, um, a bunch of things. Uh, first of all, I would really suggest to start early about thinking about m and because as a, as a software or tech entrepreneur, you're usually caught up in the operation. So you, you, you close deals, you deliver product, uh, you grow your market. All of these things keep you very busy. Now, what, what it means uh, when you start thinking about M&A is that suddenly you're getting in a different mindset, right? You're looking from the outside as an investor onto your company. And that really changes a lot. It changes your whole outlook. So we, as we started in the process, we also started looking into financials more and we really improved the financials of the company. So it helped us inside the company um, to change our financials, to improve them. Um, and, and that was a great learning. And so I would suggest start early, start thinking about it. Um, and obviously uh, an advice would be to take a good advisor. Uh, good advice is key in the process because uh, it's it's not only sort of formal advice or, or it's it's a lot of coaching. It's a lot of sort of um, discussing concerns, discussing things that happen along the way. And uh, so that would be an advice. Um, last not least, um, I would say an important advice is also um, trust in yourself, right? Just um, even if you find some buyers that um, may not be in the end interested in you. Trust in it that in the end you can be successful. Uh, it may take a few turns more than you would expect, um, but in the end it's a, it's a process that goes both ways, right? So the buyer needs to like you, you need to like the buyer. Uh, and sometimes the result will be the best, um, even if a buyer doesn't consider you seriously in the end, because the next buyer might be a much better match. And in our case, it was the case. So we're very happy 
uh, how it ended up. Um, and I think it was the best possible outcome. Um, and uh, so for us, it was really great um, to go through all the steps in the process. Uh, and in the end, um, it, it worked out very nicely for us. For our fourth question, what does life look like now after the deal? Kevin, we'll start with you. Well, I have to say, personally, I'm enjoying it. I'm no longer with the company. We worked with the company for six months after the deal. I had been working self-employed between a spiral and a previous business for 25 years. I've decided to take a year off and it's been excellent. It's allowed me to stand back, look at what I've learned over those 25 years and what's arisen from it is this, I'm more aware now how I can help other companies from what I've learned over those 25 years. And I think if I had moved straight into something else, I wouldn't have had that benefit, but the time off has been excellent for me for that. I've enjoyed it and would spend time with family as well. Thanks, Kevin. Now, Steve? So what does my life look like after the deal? Um, my handicap has not gone down. I'm still a pretty mediocre player. I have found time to read that I did not in the past. I enjoy very much. I read hours every day. I read a couple of books a week, maybe more than that. I've become a fan of podcasts. I'm able to walk and listen and learn a great deal. Maybe uh, as I hop along here, I'll trip over what's next for me. I've become fairly uh, prodigious at financial players. There's an awful lot of them. When you sell a business, I think your name makes every list on the planet. I think what I'm most proud of is I finally finished a book I started years and years ago. You know, Working Smart is something I'm proud of. It's in print this spring. You're so inclined. There's a few stories in there about my experiences in running Project or Project Tech over the last 32 years. And um, I encourage everybody to read. There's an awful lot to learn out there. And um, there's an awful lot of topics I'm finding uh, interest in that uh, maybe I didn't have the time for or maybe I just hadn't been exposed to prior to the sale. So um, I do think you need a plan for what you're going to do with yourself. For me, it was one company, 32 years, one day the lights go off. And that's a big change. That's changed emotionally. Um, there's a lot that goes into that feeling of no longer being the man and um, making sure that you got something to do is pretty important. Doesn't have to be anything changed world wise, but I do think you need to have a plan for what you're going to do with yourself, even if it's just, you know, a year or two. The, the rest of it will find itself on its way out. So I'd like to thank Quorum Group for doing such a great job and allowing me to share my experiences. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. What about you, Joaquim? Well, um, we're still part of the same company that we have founded um, because we became part of a larger group that is itself a company that's just being built up. So they wanted us to stay on board. We're very happy to do that. Um, it's a lot of fun in the new constellation. We get even more international. We're pretty international before, but we're even more global. Um, so, so life has, has been good. Um, it's, I would say, even a bit more relaxed, um, not because of less work, but uh, because of the tension, right? If you're running a tech company, then oftentimes it's like it's all or nothing situation, right? You're pushing very hard, but there's risks also, and it's all, always your personal risks. And uh, many people that work at larger corporations can't really imagine how it feels uh, the pressure to have as a tech entrepreneur now being part of a larger group that pressure is a little different now because we're part of the group so uh, we, we take the pressure together and uh, it's been good it's been good thanks joaquim now to you simon I mean, life after the deal is interesting. I'm still personally in a transition period um, because I'm still working in the company um, that was sold. The, the acquirers wanted to, me to stay on and continue running the business. So in that sense, not much has changed, but obviously, you know, a, a, a weight of responsibility has been lifted, um, cashed in some chips, which is very nice, you know, changes the options I have, the freedoms I have. So I feel, you know, privileged to have that. Great insights, everyone. Thanks again for being on with us today. We're looking forward to working with you in the new year.
Thank you for joining us for this special presentation. If you have questions, be sure to email us at info at quorumgroup.com. Or if you have a topic you'd like to see covered, please let us know. This webcast will be available at Quorum's website, quorumgroup.com, after the rebroadcast in one week. Please join us for one of our live M&A educational events in your area. We strongly encourage you to attend. The better educated you are on the M&A process, the greater your chances for an optimal outcome. This is evident in our interviews of those who sold after attending one of our events, filmed while celebrating their transaction fishing as Quorum's guest in the Gulf of Alaska. Find these and more at quorumgroup.com. Thank you again for your participation. This concludes today's webcast.